Hello, dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between, and welcome to the show. Longtime viewers of this channel will already be aware of my affinity for the X and Y axis, but did you know that I adore the Z axis just as much? I do. That's why today we're talking 3D. Specifically, we're reviewing the Lorio 3D 9005, a clever little device that allows for single body 3D photography on APS-C or Micro Four Thirds cameras. We'll take a look at the tech specs or technical specifications for those of you who have all the time in the world, share some sample images, and then make a final call. Will the Lorio 9005 bring new depths to your photo and video work, or will it just leave you flat? I bought mine used, so we'll go through what's in the box, but don't be surprised if it's different from what you get if you bought one new. The centerpiece, of course, is the 9005. It's a simple enough device that uses mirrors to send slightly dissimilar images to the left and right halves of your sensor plate. Now, I don't know if they ever offered the Micro Four Thirds version commercially, or if this is a consumer modification, but mine came with a Micro Four Thirds adapter bolted on rather aggressively. The odd thing is, this is an EOS to M43 adapter and not APS-C as one would expect. No matter, it attaches to the BMPCC 4K well enough and that's all I care about. But wait, there's more! Also in the box is a cardboard viewer for the computer monitor, a similar viewer for those bold enough to get actual prints, an instruction poster, and oddly enough, five baby gays. The lens also comes with a carrying bag, which will sit comfortably next to any Louis Vuitton or Prada accessories you might own. Just kidding, it's a regular old bag. There are very few settings on the actual lens, and what is there won't be adjusted that often. On the top, you have your aperture controls. This lens goes as wide as f11 and closes down to f22. Personally, I just leave it locked at f22 because, as with most toy lenses, the focus isn't very sharp and anything you can do to tighten up the image should be done. On the undercarriage, you'll find the distanceometer. This is a combination focus and convergence adjuster. If the subject of your photo is closer to the lenses, they need to be slightly closer to make convergence possible. If the subject is farther away, separating the lenses will exaggerate the 3D effect slightly. Sliding the distanceometer will affect focus, again, slightly. But the lens is so soft to begin with that it doesn't make that much of a difference, especially if you leave it set to f22, as I almost always do. As a general rule for those of you just starting with 3D imaging, convergence is where the two images meet, and I recommend keeping one third of the image in front of the screen, two thirds behind, with eyes resting on the screen. These aren't hard and fast rules, just good places to start as you experiment with the format. Just a quick side note on the aperture. At f11 and f22, the iris is a circle, but there is a clicked spot on the slider at f16 that is shaped unlike any iris I've seen. Were this device more high fidelity, I'd love to play with that bokeh, but as it stands, things are just a little too rough around the edges to get excited about deep dives like that. And that really sums up this piece of gear. It's interesting, sure, but it reminds me too much of that old joke. What is worse than a cat in a tree crying? Two cats in a tree crying. This lens is the two cats in a tree crying of toy lenses. It's got all the limitations of a toy lens, sticky adjustments, dodgy focus, being too zoomed in, but it's all even worse because your sensor is being split in half. This adds up to a fairly low ceiling on what you can do with this lens out of the box. But out of the box is not the end of the story. The lenses do have 58 millimeter threads so you can screw modifiers on them, giving you a wider field of view if you want it. Some extra wideness would be warmly welcomed on this device, until you remember that you'll have to buy two of them, and then you start wondering if you're throwing good money after mediocre. All that said, there are some things this lens does that made me really happy. The bar to entry on 3D imaging for hobbyists is fairly high, particularly if you want to do it correctly. When I say correctly, I'm talking about shooting with two discrete cameras that have a floating convergence point. If you're not sure what that means, don't worry. Basically, it means that Avatar was impressive for very different reasons than it was famous. Real 3D imaging can only be achieved with two lenses. In general, two lenses means two cameras. This little doohickey gets us down to one camera. Sure, it's at the cost of cutting your sensor plate in half, but here's what you get for that. 
you don't need two cameras, two power solutions, two SSDs, two lenses, time code sync, and a mount that can handle all of this. If you're old Jimmy Cameron, this solution is risible. If you're a dad who wants to grab some 3D snapshots with his family at mini golf, the single body solution is warmly welcomed. But we haven't gotten to my favorite thing this lens does, that which I've never been able to do in any of my previous 3D camera rigs. To understand its superpower, I'll have to explain my early days of 3D imaging. My first 3D cameras were as simple as could be. I would buy two disposable cameras, attach them to a plank, and then release the shutters at the same time. When I got fancy, I upgraded to a pair of Sony Cybershot cameras and saved a mountain on developing costs. While this would work for nature shots, still lifes, and posed portraits, there was something I could never photograph. Water. Since water is constantly moving, your cameras have to be perfectly in sync to shoot it in 3D. Because this is being captured to one sensor plate, it's impossible for the two images to be out of sync. Ta-da! Water in three crisp dimensions for the first time in this hobbyist's career. I know, I'm not exactly setting the world on fire, but it is exciting for me. There is something else this device does better than any of my old handmade devices, and that is that the lenses are fixed. With my handmade cameras, there was always some imperfection between the two lenses. They'd be slightly misaligned, and then I'd have to correct that in Photoshop. With this lens, I can easily build a macro in Photoshop or Premiere and let the computer do the final steps of converting this to anaglyph. I know that it's not huge, but after years of shooting on weird little bits of gear I built, it's really appreciated. Sure, the images aren't the highest quality I've ever seen. Even at f22, it doesn't feel very sharp. It's too zoomed in and you're working with half a micro four thirds sensor plate. The walls are pretty tight on this gadget. That said, it's an affordable single body 3D imaging solution targeted at hobbyists. It's a fun little bobble that I will certainly use for my own weekend family snapshots. And every time I do, I'll be so happy about it. Whether I'm shooting on disposable cameras or the Lorio 9005, I've always done 3D photography because it interested me. And if it's something that interests you, you can do a lot worse than the Lorio 9005 for the first days of dipping your toes in the crisp, three-dimensional waters of photography. If I had to give this a ranking on an arbitrary scale, which I don't but will, I would say it's a uh, clever curio. Say, do you like our new ranking system? It's like numbers, but with more words. Spectacular! As always, likes, blorps, comments, and gooples are warmly appreciated. All hail the mighty algorithm. Now to get to what you all came here for in the first place, adding a piece of art to the gallery. If you're curious about what's going on up there on the ever less austerely decorated office wall, swing by our Patreon and check out the series, The Gallery. Everything is intentional, nothing is arbitrary, and that dudes, dudettes, and duders is exactly how it should be.